Hey guys, welcome to the video on Fox with Foxo Games, and we're going to get started with a new Dark Souls playthrough specifically designed for beginners, people who are just getting started in Dark Souls and want to know how to get through the game. Maybe they found it really tough, they just want to follow someone else's, uh, basically a walkthrough is what this is. So we're going to go ahead and call this character Beginner. How about that, guys? And we'll make this character female because most of my other characters are male. The Warrior is an excellent starting class because it's a really good foundation on which to build upon. So the stats are pretty basic. You don't have really anything in intelligence and faith. Um, you don't have much in attunement at all. So you can work from these stats because you're probably going to want, you know, endurance and vitality to be high, dexterity and strength to be probably a little higher than 13. And so this is an excellent foundation on which to build. So let's go with that. Master Key will allow us to skip one of the tougher parts of the game and get straight to the uh, Blight Town Swamp, which I recommend, at least for now. Far East Traveler, so she looks Asian. Let's give her straight hair A and black. All right, there we go. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be pretty much for beginners, people who are new to the game. We're going to skip all the cutscenes. That'll just get the video flagged, plus it's a waste of time. You'll notice that I do have some mods installed, including a Dark Souls 2 HUD mod, as well as the DS Fix, which I recommend that you install because it'll make your graphics and game look a ton better, and you can change the settings however you want. I have a tutorial video on my channel. Link is in the description. All right, let's pick up the key and get started. If you hold the B button on the Xbox 360 controller, you can run. It's uh, whatever button it is on the PS3 controller. I forget how that's laid out. If you're using mouse and keyboard, you'll want to pay close attention to the controls. Go into the options. Basically go to, uh, not PC settings, sorry. Go to key settings and just kind of go through that. Take a look at what your controls are. And I really, really recommend you get a gamepad if you're playing on PC. Really recommend it. I, I can't recommend it enough, guys. Um, some games are just meant to be played with a gamepad. Dark Souls is one of them. Alright, so this is our first bonfire. We won't really be using this one much. It's not even important that you light this bonfire, but basically you light a bonfire. When you rest at it, it essentially sets that as your spawn point from now on, and it also resets all of your basic enemies in the game. When I say basic, it does not reset certain boss and quote mini boss enemies. Those, uh, those some, certain enemies will die and, and be forever dead. Whereas most enemies will revive once you hit a bonfire. However, it does basically restore your health, restore your Estus, which is healing potions, and a few other things. Restores castings. Okay, so essentially you don't want to try to fight this guy with the weapon you have, so just run through here. There, guys. I saved you a ton of heartache and frustration from your first playthrough. And another bonfire. Probably the two closest bonfires in the entire game. Nothing we can do at the bonfire right now. You'll get a ton more options there other than just leave. You'll get options like reverse hollowing, repair your armor, upgrade weapons, and all sorts of stuff. Okay, heater shield is a great shield. It's a really light shield, and it has 100% physical block. If you look under damage reduction percentage, it's in the middle of the screen right there. It says physical magic, fire, lightning, and stability. Magic, fire, and lightning should be obvious enough. Fire, it means it blocks 70% of fire damage. Lightning, 50%. Magic, 30%. Physical is 100. That's really what you want as a new player. You want a 100% physical block shield. Stability is how much it reduces the effect that blocking has on your stamina. Watch my green stamina bar on the upper left. You see how it reduced that stamina when I got hit? Having more stability means you lose less stamina. You can block more, and it makes it basically easier to play the game. All right, the long sword. This is the basic uh, weapon, the starting weapon for the warrior, and it's a really good weapon. You could take this weapon all the way to end game. Block his arrow attacks. See, it doesn't do any damage whatsoever to us because it's 100% physical block. A nice R2 will boom, cut him down with this nice stabbing attack. Thrust. And uh, we basically use the PS3 uh, terminology for basic attacks such as R1, R2, even though on the Xbox 360 controller it's going to be uh, right bumper and right trigger. You also have parry, which we'll talk about more. You can roll by hitting the B button. And right now I'm going to see if I can fast roll by removing some of our equipment. Nope, not yet. That's okay. Uh, I don't like to remove too much. We'll keep that on. If you look over to the right, you'll see HP, stamina, underneath that is equip load. If your equipment load is less than 50% of your burden, 
of, of your total, basically, you can medium roll. This is a medium roll speed. Now watch this. See how it's much faster? Now watch this. See how it's even slower? Now if you have too much stuff equipped, I don't think I'll be able to do it here, but you can actually have an even slower roll, which is co commonly referred to as a slow roll or the fat roll. A uh, fast roll is really ideal, I think, for um, most players. However, as a new player, you'll probably want to at least be able to mid-roll and then wear heavier armor in general. I'm going to skip this. Just say yes. Booyah! And he gives you basically health potions, known as Estus Blast. You can restock your Estus Blast at bonfires, which is really cool. Now watch this guy. He's going to come at us, so just hold up your shield. You can block. Now be careful. Sometimes they have multiple attacks in a row. Like, watch. Let me see if I can get him to do it. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Ooh, there we go. Now, parrying is an advanced tactic that I'm going to show you. But basically, if you hit the left trigger or left bumper just as they attack you, you can parry their attack and then follow up with an R1 gives you a riposte. Does massive amounts of damage. Uh, don't worry too much about that. You can practice with those weaker enemies if you'd like. But the easiest move by far with the most bang for your buck is going to be the backstab. And let me pull this guy out here and we'll go ahead and backstab him. Come on my friend. Now in order to backstab you need to have your shield down, circle around behind them and hit R1. Watch. Right there. I would practice that for a while on weaker enemies. You can also cause them to respawn at the bonfire. Whoops. Couldn't quite get the backstab there. Uh, practice backstabbing is one of the most useful attacks in the game, by far. Oops, see, we got him while he was in the middle of trying to shoot his arrow. Once you learn how to backstab, a lot of enemies become so much easier in this game. So watch, you could do this. Block, circle around behind, and backstab. Oh yeah, now notice what I just did there. By hitting the Y button on the Xbox 360 controller, I'm able to switch to two-handed mode. And when you're two-handing a weapon, you actually do more damage, and it also reduces the strength requirement to wield. Like this one has a strength requirement of 10. We've got 13 strength, so we're good to go. The dexterity requirement of 10 as well. Our dexterity is 13, so we're good to go. It also, if you look over to the left, under Param bonus, P-A-R-A-M, Param bonus, C and C, it goes from E to S, S being the best, S, A, B, C, D, E. C is the scaling, so it has a C quality scaling on both strength and dexterity. So we'd want to raise strength and dexterity to increase the damage that this weapon does. All right, here we go, and roll attack, bam. Roll off the edge and hit R1 as you land on his head, and you do massive damage with a plunge attack. Okay, so what I recommend here is make sure you have uh, your shield up when he attacks and then just circle around behind and swing for a bit. Keep enough stamina so that you can roll. When he goes up in the air, back away. Then you can do a thrust attack. Bam! With the R2. Keep away from him when he does that. Heal if you need to when he's up in the air or when he's far away. Thrust attacks do a lot. You can roll through his attacks or just block him. Watch this. Block. I'll show you a block. Let, let's say he's about to hit you and you're not, you don't feel safe rolling. Boom, we blocked. I got knocked back, but we're good to go. You can R1 or R2. And if you sneak around behind him, the number of attacks that will hit you are reduced. Notice I hold up my shield when he goes for an attack. And I just swing that R1. And boom. Done. Don't worry if you die several times to him. You can even pause this video and wait until you defeat him and then uh, come back and play the video again. You will get a humanity, which we'll talk about later. So, let's get the heck out of the Undead Asylum. Alright, another little secret that most players on um, their first time will miss is if you sneak down here and around this corner, you get Soul of a Lost Undead, which will give you some souls, which function both as money and experience points. At first, that may seem strange, because uh, I'm not aware of any other game that does that. I'm sure there are some people will be like, oh, dude, you know, Fox, there's 100,000 games that do that. But whatever, I'm not aware of another one. 
Um, Dark Souls basically has souls that function both as your experience points and your currency, which makes it very interesting because sometimes you got to debate whether you want to level up or buy something or upgrade armor or upgrade a weapon. So we're going to rest at the bonfire and then we're going to level up. We're going to go with essentially what's going to be a quality build. We're going to mainly focus on vitality, endurance, strength, and dexterity. Just those four. We're going to um, ignore attunement. We're going to ignore resistance, intelligence, and faith. We're not going to touch them at all. So what I first recommend is probably that you increase endurance or strength and dexterity. You could increase vitality and give you more life, but a lot of stuff hits so hard that it, it would give you at best maybe one more hit before you're dead. So I'm not too worried about that. So at the moment, I'd like to do both strength and dexterity and then summon endurance. Or, how about this? How about all of it in endurance for now? Let's see if we can fast roll. Nope, not yet. But what if we take this off? Nope. How about this? Nope, still can't fast roll. Ooh, got some humanity there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to sneak around here and pick up some items. And in order to make it easier, we are actually going to make sure that we can fast roll. There we go. I'm going to go to the probably the most difficult place to pick up items first, is this area right here. You want to be careful because these skeletons are tough at this level. Basically, roll off this ledge and then roll again towards the gravestone so that you don't roll off the edge. Roll, roll again, grab that item real quick, and then run this way. <clears throat> run pi, run pi, run pi these guys. Grab this item as quick as you can, spam that button, run some more. Run past these dudes. Run over here. You can grab this Vihander. If you want, you can run down here to grab the binoculars. I will. Just so that I have the item, even though um, it, it's you know it's not super useful the binoculars. It just I like to have them. And then uh, you can run up here. If you get killed, don't worry. Um, you may get surrounded and killed. Grab the wing spear here and run some more. Now watch these guys run through here. If they go to attack, just roll a couple times and keep running. Watch your stamina. Don't let your stamina drain all the way. Watch my stamina right now. There, see. Let it up before it drains all the way, and it'll recover faster. Grab that real quick, and then come over here, roll through here, run around this way, and try to see if you can hit the bonfire. That'll reset all those enemies. Hit it as quick as you can. Boom. We just reset all the enemies. Safe. Hitting the bonfire pretty much means you're safe. Okay. So we'll go back up here and start grabbing some more items. There are actually quite a few hidden around here. Talk to him real quick. Um, he'll give you something that you can use much later in the game. And then, whoops, didn't mean to drink that. One more time. Notice we have 10 Estus Flasks. Just say yes. It doesn't matter. We don't care about covenants right now. I just want to get a gesture from him. Some some guys will give you a gesture, which can be uh, really useful in, in uh, the multiplayer mode. So if you hit the uh, select or back button, you could use gestures like a bow. And if you want to, if you hit the uh, Y button, you can reassign gestures. Like, let's say we can do that there, we can have that there, we can have a wave right there. Whatever you want, and uh, you'll get so many gestures that you will have to reassign them if you want to use all of them. You can't have all of them equipped at once. If you hear some dogs fighting in the background, that's just a... <clears throat> Excuse me, those are my two dogs playing around. Time for a little tea. Okay, that's good. My throat was getting dry, guys. Alright, so grab these little chests. Did you see what I did there? I rolled down that little hole, and now we're down here. We're picking up some stuff. Most of this uh, will have little to no use for. Cracked Red Eye Orb is a multiplayer item. When you use it, you it allows you to invade another world, but you can only do it in certain areas. You can't do it here. Homeward Bone will send you back to the last bonfire you rested at with all of your humanity and souls intact. The dark sign will do the same thing, but you'll lose all of your humanity and your souls. So, I mean, the dark sign's practically like dying. So, its, it's usefulness is very limited. And then, Lloyd's Talismans. It took me forever to figure out what these did. The descriptions in this game can often be useless. <laughs> Talisman utilized by all Father Lloyd's uh, cleric knights to hunt down the undead. Blocks Estus recovery within a limited area. 
What that means is basically, you take a Lloyd's when you're in PvP, let's say you're fighting another character in PvP, another player, an actual player, and he keeps popping Zestus healing, you just toss that at him, and if they're inside that mist, it disables their ability to heal with Zestus for a while. So its usefulness is almost entirely limited to PvP with one exception, and I will show you guys that later in the game. Alright, we're going to pick up another item around here. Some of the most useful items for new players are actually souls, because souls, when you pick them up, they stay in your inventory even after you die, and you can choose when you want to basically pop them and get the souls in your active soul inventory. So you can save them all up, pop them all at once, and then level up at a bonfire. With dogs barking in the background. Okay. So, we are not even done yet, guys. That's not everything that we want. So we've got us most of what uh, is available there in Firelink Shrine. I think we got all of it. I don't think we missed anything. But I've got one more thing I'd like to get. And this is why I haven't popped any of my souls yet or used my humanity. For those of you who know more about the game. And I'll show you what we're about to do here. We're going to go grab an item that's going to help us out a lot. This is essentially going to be a suicide run. We know we're going to die. Okay. I'm also going to step on this and send the elevator back up. Because I just know I want to do that. That comes with experience. Pick up this uh, soul item right here. And actually, um, before... Oh, okay. Actually, what should we... oh, we'll do this one first. We're going to go on two suicide runs to grab some useful items. I have an HD texture pack installed as a mod, so it does cause a little bit of stutter in this area, but it's not a big deal. Break that pot there while I'm waiting for that to become available. Run back up here and grab this, which is actually a super awesome weapon that I really like. And, uh, you know, I wonder if I should use it. It's, it's got a stabbing motion there, a sweeping attack, stab, and then a, a, a nice long stab attack right there. But, uh, Will, whoops, you can aggro these guys, but as long as you don't do anything to them, they won't do anything to you. We'll go ahead and stick with the long sword for now. Pick up Transient Curse, that'll be useful much later. Don't need it right now, but pick it up anyway, it's there. Now this area, you have to be careful. Some ghosts will spawn, you want to run away from them. Don't try to attack them, you can't block them. They're lethal to you at this point, so just run through here. Around here. Oops, I accidentally let my stamina go all the way down. Be careful about that. Run here and stay on this little ledge right here. Grab this Firekeeper's Soul and suicide in the water. <clears throat> you get to keep all the items that you find in the game, even though you lose your active souls. Now, if you remember, I had 60-some souls in my inventory in the lower right. Now it says zero. I could go back there to get my souls, but I'd just die all over again. Wherever you die, your souls stay there as well as your active humanity. We'll talk more about that later, don't worry about it. Let me show you what we're going to do with that item we just picked up. <clears throat> it's going to be super useful for you as a new player. Basically, we got uh, a Firekeeper Soul. Do not use this item, okay? What you want to do is go up to this lady who doesn't say anything and reinforce your Estus Flask. Okay, notice what your Estus Flask says now? Estus Flask plus one. It will now heal you for more every time you use it. Yeah, you can see why that is super useful, especially for new players. So that's like having more Estus Flasks, essentially. Each one heals you more, that's like having more. And more healing is a good thing. You'll notice that I look positively terrible. I mean, look at my face, my body. It looks just undead, doesn't it? It looks like a zombie. That's part of the storyline. And you'll see how to fix that later. <clears throat> Sorry, I've just had a lot of uh, throat issues and sinus issues lately. But we're not going to let that stop us from making awesome videos. Not that my videos are really awesome. Alright, so we're going to come up this way. Be careful here because it would be very easy to fall off that ledge and die. Run along this ledge. You don't have to run. If you, if you, you know, if it makes you feel any better, just walk. It's not a big deal. You don't have to run. 
If you're following along, please feel free to pause this video at any time. Don't, you know, try don't try to hurry to get caught up with me if it's going to possibly cause you to die. See this apparently dead dragon? Yeah, what do you think might happen? Yep, you guys know what's going to happen possibly. By the way, there's a secret hidden cliff here that very few people ever notice. Okay. First things first, stay over here, run all the way over here and grab this item, it's a soul. Then, you have to be quick about this, okay guys? You can grab the first item without aggroing him. Watch. Just bunch, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Pick that up. Now that second item is what we want. You ready for this? I die pretty much every time. Run in there, grab it, grab it, grab it. Run this way, and roll, and I'm dead. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We planned on dying. We planned on dying. Okay. So now we've got another really nice shield. So if you started with a class that didn't have an 100% block shield, say like the Pyromancer, there you go. Now you've got one. And this has really nice fire block as well. Look at that fire block. 85. Stability is the same. Weight. Three more. Also looks cooler. So if you want like a cool looking shield, there you go. We're still medium rolling, but watch this. I want to show you what happens when you fat roll. You ready for this, guys? Oh, look at that roll. See how slow that is? Now, I don't think I have enough to overburden. No, I don't. If you overburden yourself, you will not be able to walk. Or, I mean, sorry, you will not be able to run or roll. You'll only be able to walk at a very slow speed. Medium roll, we're okay with that. So, we're ready to keep rolling. Last thing we're going to do before we call it quits in this video is we're going to go take out the Taurus Demon, which is the... Oh, before we do that, I'm going to go uh, Human, which you don't have to, but uh, you can if you want to. I want to show you what happens. See, see what we look like here? Yeah. Sit down at the bonfire, and where it says Reverse Halloween... Oh. We have no humanity. Look in the upper left. It says zero, zero. See that by my health and stamina? So let's fix that, shall we? Use one of these. Oh, look at that. Now it says zero, one. So we've got one. Sorry if this is pretty simplified, but, you know, sometimes people ask me such simple questions. We're going to sit down again. Go to reverse hollowing. And say yes. Now watch what happens to my character. You guys ready? Yeah, that's a big change, isn't it? <laughs> that's a big change. And there we are. So let's get some clothes on. And now we don't look so zombified, do we? When you're in this form, you can summon other players who have left their signs. You can summon NPC players, or NPC players, NPCs to help you, but you can also be invaded by other players. What we're also going to do before we're done here is we're going to pop all of our souls and use them all. Because we want to have as uh, as many stats. Uh, what am I saying? We want to put in as many stats as possible into stuff like endurance and strength and all that. Because we want to be as powerful as possible before we move forward here. We could have equipped this to our hot bar, but whatever. All right, there we go. So let's level up. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, I like nice even numbers, so we'll do that. And then we'll do that and that and that and that. How about that? How's that look? You guys can copy me exactly, or you can vary it up a bit. But we're not going to do any magic or pyromancy. And there we go. Now we'll do more damage. And we have uh, a little more stamina, a little more health. We can equip a little bit more stuff before we get overburdened. It's nice. Watch this. Oh, parried. That is pretty much an advanced move, so I don't recommend trying that unless you're willing to die a whole lot. Again, got another parry. An R1. Alright, so I'm going to try to avoid doing those because those are definitely not what we recommend for new players. Be careful here. Notice he's throwing that. If you stay here, he can't hit you at first. Draw this guy back. 
hold up your shield, draw him back here so you won't get hit by those fire bombs. If you touch a blood stain, you could see another uh, ghost of a player dying. Oh wait, I said I was going to avoid doing that. Okay, here's how I would handle Scott. Block, attack. Block, attack. And you can kill a lot of enemies doing that very safely. Run this way, keep moving until you hear the fire hit, grab the item real quick, and then run back. That way you won't get hit by the firebomb. As you come up here, it might be a good idea to hold your shield up. Here's what I do. Wait until he throws one. Run past it, all the way to this guy. Lock onto this guy and hold your shield up. Attack, hold your shield up. Shield, attack, shield, attack, shield, attack. That will get you past a lot of these simpler, easier enemies. Draw this guy down. Sometimes he likes to do a jump attack, so be careful. R2. Boom. Oh, that killed him in one shot. So that's obviously a more powerful attack. We'll go pick up this item, which happens to be a soul. Be careful not to fall off the edge. It will, of course, kill you. And we're going to R2 this guy. Bam. One shot kill on the rat. Pick up this uh, soul right here. This door is locked. It's going to be a shortcut that you open later. Alright, I'm going to turn my headphones down a bit. There we go. Easier to hear myself talking. Come up here. Alright, wait for this guy. Just like an MMORPG, if you've ever played a game like World of Warcraft, it's easier to handle enemies one at a time, so you pull them. Circle around for the backstab. I could hear that guy coming, so I turned around to look at him. And again... Block, attack, block, attack. Now some enemies will drop items for you. And we're going to take a secret hidden shortcut. There we go. Grab this item here. Now when we hop down here, be ready to fight. Okay? Be ready to fight. Attack. Twice in rapid succession. Block. Twice. Oh, we got him on the first one, because of, uh, I think it's called instability frames. The game is a lot more complicated than it looks at first. You don't always do the same amount of damage with the same attack. It depends on what condition the other enemy is in. Block, attack. And dead. Alright. <clears throat> oh, look at that. They're just chilling there, hanging out. I'm going to show you a little strategy that I have for these guys. When you come up here... Just hit them right there, and they fall down. These guys you can't hit in time. R2. R2. Oh, see how we hit each other at the same time? You gotta be careful on the timing. I timed that poorly. Ooh, look at my soul. 770. I happen to be playing this game with the GTX 770 card NVIDIA. It's prophetic. The drink of choice for Dark Souls players, other than Estus, is ice cold tea with lemon. At least it is for me. Or black coffee. Ooh, another humanity. Nice. Oh, the other benefit of humanity, I forgot to tell you, is that it restores all your health. They are valuable, however, so you want to be careful not to just use them all at once. Be careful. Circle around this guy for backstab and you won't get hit by the firebomb. Pick up the item. Ooh, gave me some firebombs. Again, block, attack. Block, attack. See, you see how simple it is? A lot of it is timing. Now, that won't get you through everything. Blocking and attacking won't get you through all fights. But it'll get you through a lot, believe it or not. Sneak around here to grab this little soul. Alright, this first video is running a bit long, but hey, who cares? Okay. It, that guy can't hurt you, that Drake. He just kind of makes this little appearance. Now be careful, that guy's shooting at you. Little sniper bolts. Draw this guy back. Feel free to try to R2 him. Oh, see, I bounced off the shield. R2 and bam. I timed that attack between his attacks, which is another strategy. Waiting for this guy to come to me. And I'm putting up my shield so I don't get hit by that sniper. And again. Block. Attack. Oop, missed. R2. Oh, there's another one. Block. Attack. And I attack twice in a row. Ooh, there's a door here. Open the door, come through here, and you get the wooden shield. Uh, not really of any use to us. 
you look at it, physical block is only 93%. That's still high, but you know it won't block 100%. I'd rather have 100% physical block. That's one of the most useful things for a new player. Ooh, look at all the summon signs. R1 spam. These are players who are willing to help you that you can summon. If you see a red one, that's a player that you're going to summon into your world to fight, not to help you. Okay, so let's uh, let's hold off on leveling with those souls, because I'm going to show you the other use for souls here. Ooh, like that was a running R1 attack. It did a little more damage than your normal R1. We're going to R2 this guy, and totally miss. <laughs> Be careful here, you can fall off that edge. R2. Or sorry, R1, R1. R1, R1. Block. R2. Booyah! Down. Okay. We're going to run around this way. These are some of the tougher enemies you encounter early in the game. The easiest way to kill them is to wait until they attack, block, and then attack them. Block and attack. Because watch what happens if you try to attack first. You bounce off them, then they attack. Then you can block, then you can attack. They like to hold their shield up, just like you do. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get this guy right here hiding behind these uh, cupboards, and boom! All right, this is our first merchant in the game. Well, actually, he's a second if you if you count the guy that we got the shrug gesture from, but he sells stuff for fate. Okay, so uh, you can purchase the orange guide and soapstone it allows you to write messages on the ground. I recommend that you pick up the residence key if you if you don't have the master key. I do, and I don't think we have much other use for it at the moment. You can buy some other weapons if you're interested in trying one out, like the hand axe is really nice. However, if you look at the hand axe, instead of having the C in C scaling, it has a C in strength, a D in uh, dexterity. That has an A in strength, but none in dexterity. So you could have 40 dexterity. That's not going to help you at all with this weapon. It's not going to improve the damage one bit. C D and C, D and A. So let's see if we can get one that's all dexterity. I don't think we have one, do we? No. All of them have some uh, strength in it. So you can see the different ways that, ooh, see E, that's very low strength, but B, quite high on uh, strength scaling. So with 40 strength, that would do quite a bit of damage. With 40 dexterity, it would do more than with 10 dexterity, but not quite as much as 40 strength. All right, do we want anything else in this guy? Why don't we get the bottomless box? And I'm uh, pretty good. We can buy some armor, but I don't need it. Thank you, You're welcome. There's an area back there, but I don't really want anything back there, so we'll skip it. Just to shorten this playthrough up a bit. Okay, we're going to aim for 45 minutes, which actually, you know, we're not going that long. We should pretty much hit about 45 when we're done here. Okay. We have 10 Estus Flasks, but I want to show you a little trick here. I want us to pop a Humanity. Uh-oh. You know what just happened? Fog Wall's up. You know what that means? That means another player is probably invading. Either is invading or is trying to. And one way to see... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on. I gotta wait till that guy just... Oh, there we go. Uh, go to Players. This is what it looks like for games for Windows Live. It also works on Xbox 360. And right here, it'll show you when the guy pops up. It'll show there first. Second thing that'll happen is your quick game will gray out. And third thing that'll happen is you'll see a message that another player has invaded you. <sighs> Unfortunately, at such low levels like this with unupgraded gear, the players who invade you will have generally fully upgraded gear, powerful weapons. It will kill you no problem. So... In order to avoid that, you can generally avoid being in human form. See, that, that didn't actually go through. Or, you can summon help and see if they can help you out. I don't think we can level off that, can we? No. But let's pop some souls to level. I want to show you guys the easiest way to get through the game, and that is to uh, use your souls. So the souls are on the hot bar, so this is the easiest way to pop them if you've got a lot. Just keep spamming that X button. Okay, one more after this one. And I think that's it, right? Yeah. Actually, we'll get rid of that. I don't want that on my hotbar at the moment. 
Okay, so now that we have one humanity in soft stock up there in the upper left, we're going to go down to Kindle, choose yes, and you won't notice anything at first, but what this will allow this bonfire to do is always replenish us to 10 Estus flasks. Before it was going to go to 5. We already had 10, so we didn't notice, but if we had come here with 3 Estus flasks, it would restore us to 5. Now that we've kindled, if we show up here with 3, it'll restore us to 10. That'll be useful for you if you're going to uh, be using this bonfire a lot, or if you're dying a lot and you want lots of Estus flasks. And I do recommend you get 10, because we're going to encounter a boss here. Got him in between his uh, attacks. R2, R1. We're going to try to summon this player. And I do recommend you get uh, help summoned in. Oftentimes these players will be very useful. The only uh, downside is sometimes they're cheating. And when you summon them to help you, you're like, oh, they're cheating, they'll beat it really easily. But again, it's, it's not a genuine experience. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Let's see what this guy left for us. Ooh, he left us a light crossbow. Let's see what the crossbow does. You can carry two weapons at once, or actually four weapons, really. Two weapons, two shields, two weapons, a shield, and a bow. Two weapons, a shield, and a light crossbow. But we don't have any bolts, so we really can't do anything with it. Yeah. Oh, well. No biggie. Let's try summoning this guy. In the meantime, oh, if you hit um, left or right on your D-pad, you notice it switches you to your other weapon. In our case, it switches us to an empty hand, but let's say you had a store straight sword. If I could get that thing out, there we go. See, it switches us back and forth between the two weapons, but this one we don't have the proper stats for, so we really don't want to be using it. It's not going to help us at all. Let's try another one, like the S-Dock. Do you see how we can switch weapons? So you can switch on the fly and decide which weapon works for you. Ooh, we got him. We got Tropical Cheese. Let's go ahead and give him a wave. Oh, uh, he gave me a shrug. And let's do this. Hold up your shield here because uh, this guy's throwing fire at you. There's three dudes in here. The strategy here will be different if you have help or if you don't. But be careful this dude who wants to come in. Ooh, backstab. All right. Now, uh, the graphic behind this guy's name is unique to this HUD mod that I've installed because, uh, like I said before, I have a Dark Souls 2 style HUD mod installed on the PC version. If you're playing on the consoles, you can't install any mods. That's just how consoles work, at least right now. And I was disappointed when I found that um, you still can't install mods even on Xbox One and PS4. It's just not something that they're going to open up the consoles to, which is a disappointment in my opinion. I really feel like they should have opened that avenue up. If you have the master key or the residence key, you can open this. <clears throat> Excuse me, run around here and grab gold pine resin, which will put lightning on any weapon that can be buffed, which is most weapons. As long as the weapon doesn't have some sort of enchantment or anything. Let's see if he already took out this dude. Yep, he did. Okay. That guy's trying to snipe you from up above. Sneak around behind and... Oh, didn't quite make the backstab. Ooh, Titanite Shard. That's going to be useful for upgrading weapons later. It looks like he's going to help me take out this Black Knight. If you are by yourself and you're new to the game, do not try to kill this guy right now. Not worth it. Trust me, not worth it. Though if he drops the Black Knight Sword, we'll probably use it as soon as we get the stats for it. Nice. See, he snuck up on him for a backstab. And bam. That guy's got a very powerful sword. Ooh, Titanite Chunk. That will be useful later. You can also get the Blue Tear Stone Ring, which increases your defense when your health is low, but is of very little use, because when your health is that low, you're probably going to die in the next shot anyway. I equipped it because it's all we have. And Booyah. This guy, uh, he kicks a flaming barrel at you, so just run up the stairs a bit and then run back. Now, because I have him to help me, I'm going to see if he'll help me take on Havel, who gives you a super, 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 a super useful ring. The ring allows you to, to basically take on a much heavier burden of equipped weapons and armor. And so you can basically equip heavier weapons and armor without being slowed down a lot. I'm going to drink. Notice the Estus just healed him as well. 
It not only heals you, it heals the other guy as well. And essentially, we're going to do very little damage to this guy. But what I'm going to try to do is get his attention, hold your shield up, and allow this other guy to run around for the backstab. Keep that shield up. Keep that shield up. He hits hard. If possible, back out of the way, and I'm going to let him go for backstabs. This only works, of course, if you have a summon, and if your summon knows what they're doing. I'm not going to backstab because my backstabs are nearly worthless. I will do like 20 damage on this guy. He's doing 240. And that's it. Yes! Pick up the Havel's Ring, and that is worth it. Okay, so watch my equipment load. 22.4 out of 56. 22.4 out of 84. So, oh, we can't quite uh, fast roll yet. Let's watch. Ooh, now we can fast roll. Gonna open that door up. Can't go in there though, because we have a summon, and it puts up a fog wall. Whenever you summon someone, or if you get invaded, you're basically locked into a specific area with fog walls. And for some reason, my throat keeps drying out while I'm trying to talk. It's because it knows I'm trying to do a beginner's playthrough. <clears throat> Alright, so this is going to make the game a lot easier. But again, as a new player, I recommend you grab summons. If you can't find them, you'll have to wing it. He's going to probably reveal this uh, lizard thing right here, which you want to kill. Boom, he just killed it. You might have to chase it down, but that's, that's some good stuff it drops for you. Alright, and until you go through this fog wall, your summons cannot. But once you go through the fog wall, if there's a player who has invaded you, um, he will be sent back home. <clears throat> I'm going to allow him to go up there and kill those two characters that are going to try to shoot me. And then I want you to see what I'm about to do. Because this guy knows what he's doing, so that's good. It's best if you get a guy who knows what he's doing. Okay, watch. We're going to run forward here, and as soon as you see this guy pop up over, turn around and run all the way back and climb the ladder. This is the first real boss of the game, the Taurus Demon. If you climb fast enough, he won't be able to touch you. Then, because this guy's stronger than me with that weapon, I'm going to let him do the plunging attack. And I'm going to do a plunge. Wait, 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 and go! Ooh, I got a plunge after him. See? We both got a plunge. Get your shield up, get your shield up, get your shield up, get your shield up, and that's it. Thanks to our summon, it was easy mode. Alright, easy mode because we had help. Okay guys, if you're uh, stuck with that boss by yourself though, the simple strategy is to block or back away, wait till he attacks, move forward, R1 attack, block, back away. It's not too terribly tough, but practice with it, you know? Don't be afraid to die. Alright guys, that is it for episode 1 of our beginner's playthrough of Dark Souls. I will see you in episode 2 where we continue our walkthrough. Later guys.